Hi, and welcome to another 5-Minute UAD Tip. Today, we're going to explore one of the most loved compressors of all time, the Universal Audio 1176. Generally speaking, compression is all about reducing the level between your softest and loudest signals, so you get a tight, focused mix. The 1176 does this beautifully. With its unique design and simple control set, you can go from gentle warming to over-the-top smashing. In this video, we'll go through the basic steps for using an 1176 and get started recording guitar, vocals, and bass. Before we start using the compressor, it's important to record proper levels, so be sure to watch the meters on your audio interface. With Apollo, just use the console app and set the input gain to get peaks of between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. Then, put an 1176 Rev-E in the first insert slot. It'll start to compress when the signal goes above minus 18 dB on the meter, so you'll see it go to work as soon as you insert it. Guitar typically has a strong attack and then dies away fairly quickly, which gives it a wide dynamic range. This can make it spiky and hard to record well. To reduce the dynamic range and make it easier to record and mix, it's often good to compress the guitar signal lightly while letting the attack come through. Start with a relatively slow attack time. On the 1176, lower values are slower and higher values are faster, and you'll want to adjust them by listening to your guitar and experimenting. Strum a chord and set the attack so it starts to compress just after the pick sound. The ratio buttons set the degree of compression. Higher ratios are much more severe, for this example, we're using a low ratio of 4 to 1. Next, set the release so it starts to climb back as the note decays. It should sound something like this. Mild compression like this helps you record a better sounding guitar part. As with guitar, it's really helpful to process vocal tracks slightly on the way in, so your recorded tracks are easier to mix. On this track, we'll use the UA1176AE because it has the unique slow attack that's perfect for vocals. Use a slow release to make it very transparent and avoid any pumping and breathing. You should end up with 4 or 5 dB of gain reduction at most. I just keep moving on. Notice that it's very transparent, but it really helps speed up your mixing down the road. Each day I face a new fear and open up my eyes. Each day I face a new fear and open up my eyes. The 1176 Rev A has been a staple on bass for decades because of its grit and bite. For a punchy bass with tons of character, set both the attack and release to 7, and use a ratio of 4 to 1. Then, set the input so you're seeing 5 to 7 dB of gain reduction. And finally, set the output to match your level. Instant good bass. One 1176 trick is to engage all the ratio buttons, which you can do by shift clicking. This puts the 1176 on blast with incredibly distorted compression. You'll see there are five different 1176s in the Classic Limiter plugin collection. So which one to use? Well, there's no right or wrong, but here are some basic differences between them. The 1176 Rev A is modeled after the original design and it has characteristic distortion even when it's not compressing. It's great for adding some grit to guitars and basses. The 1176 LN Rev E is the most common version and features lower noise and a gentler response. These characteristics make it extremely versatile on practically any program material. The 1176 AE is the anniversary edition and features a slow attack and a special 2 to 1 ratio, which makes it great for vocals. The two legacy plug-in versions are much lighter on DSP and are great for when you need to conserve resources. 
As you can see, the 1176 is extremely versatile. Be sure to read the UAD plugins manual for more detailed information, and above all, experiment with it to find what works best for you. Happy compressing. I just keep getting strong.